Hello, Internet. I'm Dan. And I'm Chaz. This is Wine and Serious Business, episode 300 and something. 30, I think, but I'm not sure. 330? Or 230? The Champagne Shower yeah, yeah. Edition. And, and I think this is the this is probably the last show we'll be doing with Matt for, for a little while. Maybe a little while. Uh, he's moving away. Uh, we'll just plan shows around when I come back. Yeah, well, yeah, there'll be, there will be more. Not the last mm-hmm. ever, but the last for a while, so he decided to go big. Mm-hmm. Uh, why, well, why, why, are, big. why are we drinking what we're drinking? We had leftovers from New Year's. <laughs> this is Matt's leftover from the That's that's amazing. Which which is uh, I don't know. These are what we didn't get to you on New Year's Day. That's incredible. But but this looks like you were holding, you started off with easier stuff then, right? You were holding oh, yeah. some of the big guns for later, and they didn't come out. But then I was jet lagged, so I got tired and I went to bed. So. Went to bed. Okay, it happens. So what are we drinking? This is the uh, Eric Rodé Blanc de Blanc Champagne. Favorite from before we did the blind show on the rosé. Yeah, before. boy, that was a good wine. I love that rosé. Yeah. I don't know if I've Ooh. had. This definitely not more than a tasting before. I don't think I've had a glass of this before. Yeah, so this, this particular bottling I haven't had. Yeah, this, yeah so this so. is the the base block block. We had actually on New Year's night. You guys both probably remember the Cuvée de Creil, or oh, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, so great. there was actually two Eric Rodé that night. This one was the. We probably should have started with this one because this is like the not as fancy one, but it's still a big a hit. One. Big hit. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to try it. it. Smells great. Smells a little austere. Mm-hmm. A little green apples, light pears. Honeycomb, maybe? A little yeah. bit of that? Yeah, a little honeyed. We were, that, there were questions about whether my energy level would be there tonight. Yeah, it's not. The wine got elevated. Yeah. We were just listening to Future right before this, that's, so of that course. Nothing, <laughs> that has nothing to do with it. We're just lit, fam. We're lit. <laughs> <laughs> you need to start your own blog. It's, it's like traveling into a different we, audience. We lit with these champagne yeah, showers. Yeah. If you've ever said called anybody you hang out with fam, please comment below. I I, I don't think anybody. So actually, answer. funny story. This is completely unrelated. Lemon lime line. green apple. That's the note. Yeah, All it's right. very green apple. But um, I'll tell the story after we sit. And I'll cut it because we were making nice, concise episodes these days. Oh, the apple flavors are fantastic. Wow. I could yeah. drink a ton of this stuff. I'm glad we started with this. Your glass. Yeah. It's delicious. All right. Oh man, it is. It's like when you get perfectly ripe apples right in season, juicy. Complex, very crisp, and fresh on the like palate. Acidic. Oh man, yeah, super bright. A little bit of like a metal thing going on too. Yeah, a little, maybe a little. Yeah, the stainless steel sort of like fermentation sort mm-hmm. of thing maybe going on in the finish. But yeah. it's really, it's like more, uh, more minerally. Um, yeah, very minerally. The way that the the sort of fruit component and the the, the acid pair with like the bubbles, it adds, like, there's just this great textural element lead like in the mid palate and finish. That I find really compelling about this wine. Typically, I don't wine, like wines this like sort of austere in flavor. Like the, the fruit is definitely just in the forefront, leading like with this mineral like bubble acid finish. Uh, but the textural component on this is fantastic. Oh yeah, absolutely. And so, yeah, it's just like it's just again, I this is a very very clean champagne. But I think a lot of people associate clean champagnes agreed. with being like almost too austere and too just like bitey like a warhead. Sure. Mm-hmm. Whereas this does not have that. Like this is just clean and crisp and fresh and acidic, but it's yeah, not right. like to the point. too much. Yeah. Yeah. But very to the point. That's just like focused. Mm-hmm. Really nice. Yeah. This yeah. Is, this is damn good. Right. If you like the big rich yeah. heavy wines like this this probably is going to do it, but Right. Which is interesting because his other ones are a lot a lot of them are like that. Yeah, the rosé is so, a bit like that. Yeah, the rosé is right? like that, which this forward, is not. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, this and, is, yeah. yeah, this is this is good champagne. But icy yeah. up front and just great. Man, the flavors are just. This they're, could probably. They're go delicate, little, but they're fantastic. This could go a little longer. I think mm-hmm. this was disgorged on one nine fifteen, so basically a year ago. Yeah, it's a or two years ago. This is a current release, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But but wow, great stuff. What was the price point on this wine? Like fifty bucks? I don't even remember. Forty five bucks somewhere in that ask, price range. What that with ask Eric? I think it was like fifty dollars, forty eight dollars. Like yeah, that. sure. So very reasonable at that totally price. Totally delivers. Point. Yeah. yeah, and and I would say if you're. Looking where like the package matters at all, this producer has one of the best packages. Yeah, you can't really probably tell. In champagne, the labels um, are so like nicely printed, and like the bottle itself has, has this, this like... weird swirl to the glass. Mm-hmm. The foils are always t- tip top. I'm like, it's always one of the just when it comes to champagne, it's sexy, sexy packaging. It's yeah, they get your attention. Yeah, yeah. it does. It truly does. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. So, all right. So the second wine we're doing this is the Pierre Peters, right? Blanc de Blanc. Another Blanc de Blanc? So it looks uh, like this is another Blanc de Blanc, yes. Yeah. So Cuvée de Reserve, yeah. Another yeah. classic. And this typically is a little bit more on the like sluttier side. So is Pierre Peters a, lo- a house or is it a, another grower? No, it's a grower as well. Okay. So again, little champagne fact here. Yeah. If yeah. it starts with RM on the serial number, it means Recolt Manipulant or whatever, which is basically a grower champagne. Oh. So on I the serial no number, idea. look for RM. Yeah. And there's another one too. It's like RC. No. Yeah. 
RRM is okay. Recollect. We're all looking Nudo. for that. Yeah, yeah, where is it? RM right there, see? RM D4. Way RM down D4. below, way down at the bottom. Real yeah. tiny. All of these are RMs. I don't think I can, I don't think I can even put a, uh, wow. put a picture of that for you folks there. Maybe I can circle it. Um, so yeah, if you ever want to know the difference between yeah. Negotian and Grower, look at the serial number. RM is always Grower. But you've got, you've got some, uh, you've got some history with Pierre Peters. Is this your favorite? Your favorite. I, it's your not. It's one. It's in my top like ten, I think, in okay. terms of producers. Why? Like, it's just again, I like the sluttier, kind of bigger champagnes a lot. So again, it, this Rode, the Rode, Rodez, whatever, however it's, it's got to be Rodez. Yeah, is yeah. fantastic. And, Rodez but nuts. I lean towards this, it's and then when nuts. we get to this, like that's like the extreme. But this type of style is more my thing. Like the. Um, What's that mm. other producer? The, Getting uh, a little more yeasty this time. Yes, exactly. Like a lot of the buttercream, a lot of the like the bruised yeah, apple, as Bo would okay. say. Yeah. Yeah, this is like a little sulfur. I'm not getting so but, much bruised apple here, but yeah, definitely I can see a little bit. A little yeasty, a little side. sugary on the nose, mm -hmm. but like still got really nice fruit. Yeah, really nice scone or something like that. Yeah. That's some mm. shit. Yeah, That's definitely cool. richer. I'm glad mm -hmm. we did it. In, I'm glad we did it in that order. Agreed. Um, Brioche. Yeah, little ripe ripe fruits are more like oranges, uh -huh. I think. Yeah. Um, m more than the like the really crisp crisp green apples. Um, a little bit of that yeasty character, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, you said brioche. A little bit of that lingering out on the finish. Definitely a little richer, a little a little sweeter. The bubbles don't aren't uh, as aggressive as they were on the Rodé. Like I like where they were on the Rodé, like how they were integrated. Yeah, Definitely on like a lighter lighter uh, sort of feel here. Definitely finer. Yeah, it's a little bit toasty as well, I think, too, at the end. Like, it's not just, like, the sort of, like, yeasty bread quality, but you get this, like, little bit of, like, a crisp, like, toast quality to it. No, and the bubbles feel a little bit bigger than the Rodé, um, but, it, man, you? it's... Yeah? No, not you? Yeah? Not opposite no. for me. Yeah. yeah. They're bigger, but there's, like, less of them. This was, like, really aggressive. It was, like, tiny and tight and sharp, yep. whereas this is a little bit more full and round and um, less. But it's got a great feeling of purity uh, towards the finish. Um, that that is really engaging, and again, kind of makes you like, oh, I could drink this all night long. Not tonight, but uh, I wish I wish I could. Yeah. For you, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and these are like this is like fifty three, I think. So right, and this is this is one that at least in the Portland market around Oregon or in Portland, um, I, I see it on shelves. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you can get this pretty like, much. Anywhere. I think nationally, even right. I don't know. Oh, good. Okay. I mean, that's why I asked if it was a grower, if it was a house, because uh, I, it's something that I see so regularly. You don't see yeah. the Rodé stuff on no. shelves ever, um, whereas the Pierre Peter stuff you do. Yeah, this is really this stuff's really hard to come by. This stuff not so much. You can pretty much buy it anywhere in town. This you cannot find this easily either. So yeah, now, you've had that for a while now, right? We're ready, we're oh, ready yeah. to move on to that. Yeah, yeah. so I, say, I haven't seen this. One recent disgorgement bottlings for these two, but this is this is actually vintage champagne. Yeah, yeah, and, and you've had this in your cellar for at least five years. Yeah, right? and I have a couple bottles of it. So I had a bunch of the O2 and I had a bunch of the O6 as well. So. This is the Marc Chauvet Special Club. I'm um, so excited to get into this. Yeah, so these uh, <laughs> we've had many times before. The 2002, I think, was like one of Chaz's favorites. Yeah. Ever, so. I love the O2 as well. Mm -hmm. I had it a couple times. I got it by the Fantastic, glass at yeah. Picks at one point, I remember. Oh, it was, yeah. What a score. And this one this one had been sitting on for a little while. So it's like, typically, like, the Chauvet, especially the Special Club Chauvets, are, like, very, like, big and very rich and very crazy. And right when they're fresh, right? But this has also had a little bit of time, so it's like probably going to be big fat bottle. And was this the last special club that they made too? I think there's an 08. Is, is there okay? Because I, I think Chauvet right. quit doing special club. Uh, it was like big, big uh, selection process amongst your peers. Everybody in the in the club has to agree that you've made this is your finest champagne and that it's. Did Chauvet get rejected or something? No, no. I think it's they just, just the decided they didn't. Huge. They didn't want to. Yeah. So no. the way that they do it is like they basically have they start off and they have they pick their best barrel. Like, the, yeah, the, sure. the, the, the winemaker picks the best barrel still, then they taste it, and they taste it with the tasting panel, and they deem whether or not it's worthy of the special club designation. Then they bottle it in the special bottle, and then they taste it again and determine after the, what, secondary, after fermentation. the secondary fermentation and determine again if it's worthy of selling Holy under the shit. special club yeah. designation. So... It's a process. That's, that's yeah, why there's that's, not many. That's I mean, like, so treacherous. I'll right. Well, yeah. and the politics that must be involved in that. Right. And, yeah. and, and, and wow. I can I can definitely see a number of uh, pretty legitimate reasons for excusing yourself from that. But uh, but but when you, for those that are still in it, right, if you see those bottles, it's a high bar to get into it. It's always it's always interesting. And Chave is one of the smaller producers on that, too, as well. Like, they, I mean, Chave, she, she has a whole bunch of different, like, wines that she makes, but they're all very, very small quantities. So, like, she's pretty small. Sure. I mean, it's not as big as, like, say, the... 
uh, what is the name, Amar Gain or anything like that. Sure. Also, these special coaches, Gmna, of course, is another big one. So, right. Yeah. Sure. Sure. But uh, but big treat. Thanks for thanks for breaking this yeah, out. Thank yeah. you for capitalizing the big on that too. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that smells it's like wonderful. like cinnamon rolls. Yeah. Hey, you're right. That's that's fat. Like apple pie and cinnamon rolls yep. or something like that. Yeah. Big big amounts of spice in the nose, which is not something I would sort of see in champagne. Kind of crazy, yeah. Cinnamon rolls on the palate. The age is coming through a little bit. Definitely, mm-hmm. definitely a little little bit of oxidation on the fruit. A little bit, man. But I like it actually. It's like yeah. the oxidation. I think just adds to it, in my opinion. It's like mm-hmm. you still get a little bit of the acid. It kind of evens things out, but it's just like fat, caramely. Sugary, bready madness. But still with like a, a really good acid, like undertone. The acidity right? like, is great here. The acidity yeah. is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Keeps all those flavors really elevated. The bubbles are on the lighter side, but have a really fine texture to them. Yeah, it's delicious. Yeah, really nice green apple acidity. I think I take a shower in this. <laughs> That's when you cut in that little. I should. Well, I would say, has, has, have you ever had champagne poured on you? No, I have not. Actually, okay. So. I yeah, have. One day. Yeah, he has. Yeah. One is so your house. episode <laughs> like 180 or something. Yeah, this has been fucking awesome. That was a good day. Um, good show. We need to Yeah, that was the uh, show. Francois Cossi. Let's put it this way. I mean, at the price point for all of these wines, if I had purchased them myself, I would be happy with them. Like, yep. they're all fantastic and worthy of a purchase yeah they're honestly. all about the same price like this is i yeah. think 48 48 and like 52 or something so yeah and i think i think if i boy and that is like i expect to spend around i like to spend around 50 bucks on champagne and i feel like a lot of good stuff costs like 75 and that kind of hurts I, I that's a little more than i like to spend so when i find good stuff yeah. between 48 and 60 i feel really i feel really good mm-hmm. about that um between the three what's your guys's favorites or what's your favorite pick one this one for sure like, I just love this style, so it's, like, so big and so yeah. ridiculous, which I hate big red wines, which is really weird, but, like, when it comes to champagne, the bigger the better. Yeah. And it's tough. I think if I'm, I think if it was the three of us hanging out drinking tonight, I think this is, this is where I'd go. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I think, I, 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 yeah, yeah, this one as well. But I, but I think you I, need I a little time to think par- about it. I think I'm just, like, swayed partially. I wish I could see this blind. I wish I could see this whole tasting blind, because, like... This is a very complex, interesting wine, but I do honestly have a little bit of love in my heart for that. This one, I think, typically is a better made wine if we think about, like, wines being traditional and, like, trying to create a pure champagne. From an, like, yeah. from an educational standpoint, like, that... that like that's, that's proper champagne. It's a proper yeah, champagne. Very yeah, minerally, very minerally, it's, like, got that, like, it's that perfect, perfect acidity, it's not too rich, etc. This one is just, like, if you want to low-cut dress somebody, this is the one to do it, right? <laughs> So it's, like... Yeah. Whereas I think honestly, if we think blind, this probably would have just been like whoa for all of us because yeah. it's so it's so Sharp much hair. bigger and different. So yeah. yeah, I look good in a low cut dress. Mm-hmm. In case any of you were wondering, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's that's a wrap. You wanna you wanna you wanna do your thing or you wanna just call? call do you it have a question today? I know you get no questions. No. Yeah, there we go. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna. No, end we this we one. we all open. I mean, if you're traditionally, if you're a, a wine lover, and I'm sure if you watch this, so you probably opened something sparkling for for New Year's. What did you open? Right. And if you didn't open something sparkling, did you open? I, I opened a bottle of non vintage Bresh. For, yeah, for that was, that was real good. Freaking good. Yeah. It was thanks, good. thanks, Eric. 92 for, <laughs> 92 for soft Riesling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We opened some Riesling, too. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even remember. These are the ones that didn't. I would say, well, yeah, this is, a, yeah. this is a good a good taste. Thanks for watching, folks. Yeah. Um, I hope you guys have a great New Year's. Yeah, and totally. And thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully, we'll bring you some exciting stuff coming up in the new year. We're trying to do a new project. I got to sit down and write write something good about it but hopefully we'll bring that to you soon